Welcome back to the channel everybody. End of the day, I'm just in from the field. I've spent the last couple days out there working like a madman, so I haven't had a lot of time to do shop work in here. Very brief 1113 update. I have kind of ventured into the pressure gauges for that engine. It's looking like uh, based on what I'm on what I'm finding, yeah, it's going to be a few days before I have anything I can really throw together on that front. So um, in the meantime, I'll just uh, kind of a responding to comments video again. Under the last video, there was some, I'll just say, concern voiced by several people in how these D3400s or all of these 1930s cat engines, um, almost all the 40s engines, even some of the 50s ones, just plumb their return lines out to drip out into open space or onto the ground. Now, it's not nearly as bad as most people were assuming. Um, I guess first rule with these old diesels is take just about everything you know about modern diesels and pretty much throw it out because I'm going off of memory here and I might be wrong, but 5J1113 was built in 1938 and I believe it was around 1931-ish. I'm going off memory here, so don't, uh, um, don't yell if I'm wrong, but it was in that area that they first put a diesel engine in, in a Caterpillar 60, uh, made the Cat Diesel 60. So 1113 was only built just a few years into Caterpillar's 4A into the diesel realm. So a lot of the things with these early diesel engines, even this D3400, are pretty basic and pretty crude compared to today's standards. That having been said, for the time period in which they were building these things, they were doing some rather impressive stuff, like I said, for that time. We'll just look in this Caterpillar RD6 operator's manual under care of the fuel system. And they're talking about buying good clean fuel and only using good clean fuel because the clearance between the fuel injection pump plunger and the barrel is very small, actually less than one ten thousandths of an inch, which makes it evident that the smaller invisible particles of dirt that can pass through the filters can damage these finely finished parts. So kind of ironic that they, uh, <laughs> they were making fuel injection parts that were so finely uh, precision machined that they actually could not make a filter that could adequately protect them. Ironic? Maybe. But those tight tolerances actually went quite a ways toward not creating any undue leakage during normal operation. Even the most well-worn D2s that I've been into really don't ever seem to have a problem with a lot of fuel coming down from those plungers, pooling at the back of the injection pump housing and coming out this drain line at the front. Um, usually by the time they start leaking past the plungers, uh, they're worn enough that you have enough pressure loss that there are other problems, hard starting, lack of power, what have you, and they've been taken apart and that has been addressed. So really, if your engine is in good condition, you really won't have anything coming out this front line at all. Because like I said, your pump plungers really will not be leaking. If the packing seals in the transfer pump are good, that little telltale line that comes out and tees into here isn't gonna be sending anything down. And about the only time anything's gonna be coming out this front one is if you have opened this bleeder at the top of the filter tower from replacing fuel filters or just plain bleeding the fuel system. That's what feeds this elbow here and takes it on down that line. So the front one, if your engine is good, should stay dry pretty much all the time. But this rear line that comes down from the return side of the fuel injectors is something that's going to drip on these old engines, regardless of how good the fuel system is, how good the engine is. It's just something that's always gonna have a little bit of leakage. And I've went through all my reference material. I cannot find the spec to show you guys, but I know I've read it somewhere, and I want to say with good tight injectors, you can expect possibly one drip per minute, maybe two coming out the end of that line. So we're not talking about a steady full flow stream that comes past these things. Basically, it's just however much leaks by the needle that's inside these things comes up into the top of the body and then out that tube times four and you're still maybe one to two drips per minute, maybe quick cutaway view of one of these style injectors and I don't know all the particulars of this but in a nutshell fuel comes in from the scroll pumps makes its way down to the bottom when the scroll pump pushes up and creates pressure it will unseat the needle the fuel will spray in a cone type pattern out of the orifice and basically when the scroll pump reaches the end of its travel opens up that return passage cuts the pressure to the injector all the pressure feeds back real quick 
needle seats again, injection cycle quits. But however much leakage you have between that needle and the spray valve assembly in the bottom will eventually migrate up here past your pressure tension springs up through the banjo bolt in the top and into that return line. So back in the day, engineering determined that the amount of return flow from these injectors was so minimal, it really did not need to be captured or wasn't worth the effort, and it was good enough just to let what return flow was there drip out onto the ground. But there were some concerns voiced about that return flow back in the day, so we'll go back to the selected articles from Service Magazine's book. You guys know I just love this thing, and I'm going to warn you right now, I'm about to read you a story. Page 88, Injection Valve Overflow Line Service Bulletin from September 20th, 1943. We call your attention to the fact that the end of the fuel injection valve drain line is now connected into the fuel transfer pump. Formerly, the end of this line was open, allowing fuel to drip on the floor or blow back on the engine, causing an unsightly appearance. Also, some owners were inclined to worry about the effect the small amount of lost fuel had on the economy of the engine, and apparently nobody cared that it was dripping into the soil on their fields. The line enters the suction side of the transfer pump, making it necessary that all connections along the line be kept airtight. Copper gaskets have been added, as shown, right in this area here, to the connections between the overflow line and the injection valves to keep air from entering at these points. Some discretion should be used in tightening the cap screws to avoid crushing or distorting the thin-walled copper connections. And this bottom part uh, is not really applicable, but basically they just really sealed off where that overflow line goes to the top of the injector and then ran that thing down into the suction side of the pump. Now. I have read about a few instances that guys have had with tractors that have had that little modification done and a common problem with that usually is these connections that the banjo bolt goes through at the top of the injector suffer from deformation from years and years of over tightening like if the copper washer was mashed out or something had given up and it started to seal a lot of times these just got tightened more and more until the leak stopped or until something broke but you can see on this one, off the end of my thumb, there's a lot of crush in happening on that connection, both sides. And it's been, well, I shouldn't say it's been my experience, but I've done plenty of reading online that has suggested that taking this return flow and trying to tap it back into the suction side of the pump actually creates more headaches than what it solves because any little leak right here is going to basically cause drain back in the system. It's going to cause air pockets in the system. You go to start this thing after it's sat for a week, a month, six months sometimes, you know, like winter times long in Minnesota, you probably have to do an entire fuel system bleed every time you start the machine up to try and get that thing to pop off. And a lot of people that have had that problem have just reverted back to this old uh, dead-ended line that just drips out because like has been said fuel leakage from those injectors or return flow I should say is very very minimal and honestly You know, I can be fussy with things, but it's nothing I've ever fooled with my rd6 Has well, both my rd6s I should say have that return line that just drips out Basically out into the air onto the ground and come to think of it 5J2115 uh, also had the return flow plumb just like that. And honestly, even for as worn out as that was, none of those machines have ever caused me any kind of a problem. They don't leak, they don't make a mess. And I'm just gonna leave 1113 the same way. I'm pretty confident we have some pretty decent injectors here. And I don't think that's gonna be much of a problem. Um, like I said before, you know, these might be deformed a little bit, but they're likely gonna be good enough to seal all that non-pressurized return flow that comes from those without making a mess. We still have compression fittings on this elbow here. If I was going to go to a sealed return system, at the very least, I'd replace those with maybe some double flares. But then again, you still have possible weak points here. Um, like I said, it's just gonna stay. But that, was, uh, that made for some very good conversation. Some of those uh, concerns or questions that were brought up in the comment section on our last video. And uh, I thought it was worth doing a video and talking about that service bullet and everything else just kind of so you guys can kind of know what to expect with these things. And, you know, I could see a lot of people thinking that that was eighth inch line, just full flowing fuel all the time. And it's not uh, it's not that way on these old ones. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for your comments. I do read through all that stuff and uh, sometimes they can lead to rather interesting discussions. So I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please tune in again.